Okay, today we have some timing errors that were introduced as a result of the transfer from tape, from multi-track tape into digital. What happened is that a slight difference in speed between the two takes on the multi-track recorder, very, very slight uh, change in speed, uh, results in a progressive error which uh, increases as the song progresses. So we need to move or nudge the audio uh, just a few milliseconds in time uh, and this amount of time has to increase uh, further down in the song towards the end than it does at the beginning since the um, slight shift in speed, tape speed, is a cumulative error. So what we're going to do first of all in our sonar we are going to um, select the regions where no sound is heard in these various tracks. Now up here we have a vocal track and uh, we can uh, take out the dead space we actually should only do it I can I can actually select this bottom track here as well let's do let's hold control down and click on that so the selection now extends across those two tracks and we just go uh, edit uh, cut and lo and behold that's like so we've gotten rid of it and we come here now and we go that little space there and uh, we should be able now by holding down control and selecting this track to extend it down there so what's the purpose of that? that's to leave some holes we want some holes in there so that when we nudge the audio slightly the, the clips will behave independently and we can select the clips independently okay so now as I said the ones here at the beginning are okay uh, by the time it reaches here we probably will have to nudge this hair about uh, maybe let's see how is it going how many uh, we only have three pieces so we will nudge this hair about 75 milliseconds the two of these we want to nudge 75 milliseconds so we click on them to select them and then if we come down here and we go control on track 9 that should select that one as well and then we come up here and we go edit sorry no process nudge and we uh, select actually no we need to calibrate it first so we press P to call it the preferences menu and uh, we see we have it set here for 125 because that's further down in the song so we change it to 75 Notice that we have it set as 75 milliseconds. Let's set up this uh, third one here as well. We'll set that one up to 125 milliseconds because we can use that. We can use that on the second um, second clip. So we've got 75 milliseconds on two and 125 milliseconds on three, and we just apply that. Now, when we come here, we can go here process nudge right by two and that will move both of them you it would have moved so imperceptibly that you wouldn't have noticed it 75 milliseconds to the right so let us come here now on the uh, this very delicate operation we're doing here uh, we don't have to worry about this second part here because even if it nudges off beyond the edge of the track there is no problem with that so we're going to select that one and then we just go control here and click on track 9 and that one's selected as well and then we go process nudge and select right 3 and that nudges well that's nudged quite a consistent amount hasn't it that was very visible um, that looks like that's gone too much I'm not quite sure why that went too much let us check out and see what we've done Oh, that's 125 frames okay we had it set wrong we didn't set the unit to frames so that's the reason why that's been so drastic 
Anyhow, no problem. We just go edit, undo, and we put it back where it was before. And uh, this time we set it up and we change the unit from frames to milliseconds. 125 milliseconds and we save that. Close. And now we can go process nudge right three. And it's a very imperceptible change as we would expect. Uh, that's not an awful lot of milliseconds. Alright, so let us see let us see how it sounds and how the timing is on both the vocals and the the lead guitar. That's what we're mostly interested in here. Seeing how the timing is on the vocals and the lead guitar. <laughs> 